This is section 13 of the complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Trimmer's Opinion Concerning the Papists by George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. Read by John Greenman. To speak of popery leadeth me into such a sea of matter that it is not easy to forbear launching into it being invited by such a fruitful theme and by a variety never to be exhausted but to confine it to the present subject i will only say a short word of the religion itself of its influences here at this time and of our trimmer's opinion in relation to our manner of living with them if a man would speak maliciously of this religion one may say it is like those diseases where as long as one drop of the infection remaineth there is still danger of having the whole mass of blood corrupted by it in swedland there was an absolute cure and nothing of popery heard of till queen christina whether moved by arguments of this or the other world may not be good manners to inquire thought fit to change her religion and country and to live at rome where she might find better judges of her virtues and less ungentle censures of those princely liberties to which she was sometimes disposed than she left at stockholm where the good breeding is as much inferior to that of rome in general as the civility of the religion the cardinals having rescued the church from those clownish methods the fishermen had first introduced and mended that pattern so effectually that a man of that age if he should now come into the world would not possibly know it in denmark the reformation was entire in some states of germany as well as geneva the cure was universal but in the rest of the world where the protestant religion took place the popish humor was too tough to be totally expelled and so it was in england though the change was made with all the advantage imaginable to the reformation it being countenanced and introduced by legal authority and by that means might have been perhaps as perfect as in any other place if the short reign of edward the sixth and the succession of a popish queen had not given such advantage to that religion that it hath subsided ever since under all the hardships that have been put upon it it hath been a strong compact body and made the more so by these sufferings it was not strong enough to prevail but it was able with the help of foreign support to carry on an interest which gave the crown trouble and to make a considerable not to say dangerous figure in the nation so much as this could not have been done without some hopes nor these hopes kept up without some reasonable grounds in queen elizabeth's time the spanish zeal for their religion and the revenge for eighty eight gave warmth to the papists here and above all the right of the queen of scots to succeed was while she lived sufficient to give them a better prospect of their affairs in king james time their hopes were supported by the treaty of the spanish match and his gentleness towards them which they were ready to interpret more in their own favor than was either reasonable or became them so little tenderness they have even where it is most due if the interest of their religion cometh in competition with it as for the late king though he gave the most glorious evidence that ever man did of his being a protestant yet by the more than ordinary influence the queen was thought to have over him and it so happening that the greatest part of his anger was directed against the puritans there was such an advantage to men disposed to suspect that they were ready to interpret it a leaning towards popery without which handle it was morally impossible that the ill-affected part of the nation could ever have seduced the rest into a rebellion that which helped to confirm many well-meaning men in their misapprehensions of the king was the long and unusual intermission of parliaments 
so that every year that passed without one made up a new argument to increase their suspicion and made them presume that the papists had a principal hand in keeping them off this raised such heats in men's minds to think that men who were obnoxious to the laws instead of being punished should have credit enough to secure themselves even at the price of destroying the fundamental constitution that it broke out into a flame which before it could be quenched had almost reduced the nation to ashes amongst the miserable effects of that unnatural war none hath been more fatal to us than the forcing our princes to breathe in another air and to receive the early impressions of a foreign education the barbarity of the english towards the king and the royal family might very well tempt him to think the better of everything he found abroad and might naturally produce more gentleness at least towards a religion by which he was hospitably received at the same time that he was thrown off and persecuted by the protestants though his own subjects to aggravate the offence the queen mother as generally ladies do with age grew most devout and earnest in her religion and besides the temporal rewards of getting larger subsidies from the french clergy she had motives of another kind to persuade her to show her zeal and since by the roman dispensatory a soul converted to the church is a sovereign remedy and layeth up a mighty stock of merit she was solicitous to secure herself in all events and therefore first set upon the duke of gloucester who depended so much upon her good will that she might for that reason have been induced to believe the conquest would not be difficult but it so fell out that he either from his own constancy or that he had those near him by whom he was otherwise advised chose rather to run away from her importunity than by staying to bear the continual weight of it it is believed she had better success with another of her sons who if he was not quite brought off from our religion at least such beginnings were made as made them very easy to be finished his being of a generous and aspiring nature and in that respect less patient in the drudgery of arguing might probably help to recommend a church to him that exempts the laity from the vexation of inquiring perhaps he might though by mistake look upon that religion as more favorable to the enlarged power of kings a consideration which might have its weight with a young prince in his warm blood and that was brought up in arms i cannot hinder myself from a small digression to consider with admiration that the old lady of rome with all her wrinkles should yet have charms able to subdue great princes so far from handsome and yet so imperious so painted and yet so pretending after having abused deposed and murthered so many of her lovers she still findeth others glad and proud of their new claims a thing so strange to indifferent judges that those who will allow no other miracles in the church of rome must needs grant this is one not to be contested she sitteth in her shop and selleth at dear rates her rattles and her hobby-horses whilst the deluded world still continueth to furnish her with customers but whither am i carried with this contemplation it is high time to return to my text and to consider the wonderful manner of the king's coming home again led by the hand of heaven and called by the voice of his own people who received him if possible with joys equal to the blessing of peace and union which his restoration brought along with it by this there was an end put to the hopes some might have abroad of making use of his less happy circumstances to throw him into foreign interests and opinions which had been wholly inconsistent with our religion our laws and all other things that are dear to us yet for all this some of those tinctures and impressions might so far remain as though they were very innocent in him yet they might have ill effects here 
by softening the animosity which seemeth necessary to the defender of the protestant faith in opposition to such a powerful and irreconcilable an enemy you may be sure that among all the sorts of men who applied themselves to the king at his first coming home for his protection the papists were not the last nor as they fain would have flattered themselves the least welcome having their past sufferings as well as their present professions to recommend them and there was something that looked like a particular consideration of them since it so happened that the indulgence promised to dissenters at breda was carried on in such a manner that the papists were to divide with them and though the parliament notwithstanding its resignation to the crown in all things rejected with scorn and anger a declaration framed for this purpose yet the birth and steps of it gave such an alarm that men's suspicions once raised were not easily laid asleep again to omit other things the breach of the triple league and the dutch war with its appurtenances carried jealousies to the highest pitch imaginable and fed the hopes of one party and the fears of the other to such a degree that some critical revolutions were generally expected when the ill success of that war and the sacrifice france thought fit to make of the papists here to their own interest abroad gave them another check and the act of enjoining the test to all in offices was thought to be no ill bargain to the nation though bought at the price of one million two hundred thousand pound and the money applied to continue the war against the dutch than which nothing could be more unpopular or less approved notwithstanding these discouragements popery is a plant that may be mowed down but the root will still remain and in spite of the laws it will sprout up and grow again especially if it should happen that there should be men in power who in weeding it out of our garden will take care to cherish and keep it alive and though the law for excluding them from places of trust was tolerably kept as to their outward form yet there were many circumstances which being improved by the quick-sighted malice of ill-affected men did help to keep up the world in their suspicions and to blow up jealousies to such a height both in and out of parliament that the remembrance of them is very unpleasant and the example so extravagant that it is to be hoped nothing in our age like it will be reattempted but to come closer to the case in question in this condition we stand with the papists what shall now be done according to our trimmer's opinion in order to the better bearing this grievance since as i have said before there is no hopes of being entirely free from it papists we must have among us and if their religion keep them from bringing honey to the hive let the government try at least by gentle means to take away the sting from them the first foundation to be laid is that a distinct consideration is to be had of the popish clergy who have such an eternal interest against all accommodation that it is a hopeless thing to propose anything to them less than all their stomachs have been set for it ever since the reformation they have pinned themselves to a principle that admits no mean they believe protestants will be damned and therefore by an extraordinary effect of christian charity they would destroy one half of england that the other might be saved then for this world they must be in possession for god almighty to receive his rents for him not to accompt till the day of judgment which is a good kind of tenure and ye cannot well blame the good men that will stir up the laity to run any hazard in order to the getting them restored what is it to the priest if the deluded zealot undoeth himself in the attempt he singeth masses as jollily and with as good a voice at rome or st omer's as ever he did is a single man and can have no wants but such as may be easily supplied 
yet that he may not seem altogether insensible or ungrateful to those that are his martyrs he is ready to assure their executors and if they please will procure a grant sub annulo piscatoris that the good man by being hanged hath got a good bargain and saved the singeing of some hundred of years which he would else have had in purgatory there's no cure for this order of men no expedient to be proposed so that though the utmost severity of the laws against them may in some sort be mitigated yet no treaty can be made with men who in this case have left themselves no free will but are so muffled by zeal tied by vows and kept up by such unchangeable maxims of the priesthood that they are to be left as desperate patients and looked upon as men that will continue in an eternal state of hostility till the nation is entirely subdued to them it is then only the lay papists that are capable of being treated with and we are to examine of what temper they are and what arguments are the most likely to prevail upon them and how far tis advisable for the government to be indulgent to them the lay papists generally keep their religion rather because they will not break company with those of their party than out of any settled zeal that hath roots in them most of them do by the mediation of the priests marry amongst one another to keep up an ignorant position by hearing only one side others by a mistake look upon it as they do upon escutcheons the more ancient religion of the two and as some men of a good pedigree will despise meaner men though never so much superior to them by nature so these undervalue reformation as an upstart and think there is more honor in supporting an old error than in embracing what seemeth to them to be a new truth the laws have made them men of pleasure by excluding them from public business and it happeneth well they are so since they will the more easily be persuaded by arguments of ease and conveniency to them they have not put off the man in general nor the englishman in particular those who in the late storm against them went into other countries though they had all the advantage that might recommend them to a good reception yet in a little time they chose to steal over again and live here with hazard rather than abroad with security there is a smell in our native earth better than all the perfumes in the east there is something in a mother though never so angry that the children will more naturally trust her than the studied civilities of strangers let them be never so hospitable therefore tis not advisable nor agreeing with the rules of governing prudence to provoke men by hardships to forget that nature which else is sure to be of our side when these men by fair usage are put again into their right senses they will have quite differing reflections from those which rigor and persecution had raised in them a lay papist will first consider his abbey lands which notwithstanding whatever hath or can be alleged must sink considerably in the value the moment that popery prevails and it being a disputable matter whether zeal might not in a little time get the better of the law in that case a considering man will admit that as an argument to persuade him to be content with things as they are rather than run this or any other hazard by change in which perhaps he may have no other advantage than that his now humble confessor may be raised to a bishopric and from thence look down superciliously upon his patron or which is worse run to take possession for god almighty of his abbey in such a manner as the usurping landlord as he will then be called shall hardly be admitted to be so much as a tenant to his own lands lest his title should prejudge that of the church which will then be the landlord he will think what disadvantage tis to be looked upon as a separate creature depending upon a foreign interest and authority 
and for that reason exposed to the jealousy and suspicion of his countrymen he will reflect what an encumbrance it is to have his house a pasture for hungry priests to graze in which have such a never-failing influence upon the foolish which is the greatest part of every man's family that a man's dominion even over his own children is mangled and divided if not totally undermined by them than to be subject to what arbitrary taxes the popish convocation shall impose upon him for the carrying on the common interest of that religion under penalty of being marked out for half an heretic by the rest of the party to have no share in business no opportunity of showing his own value to the world to live at the best an useless and by others to be thought a dangerous member of the nation where he is born is a burthen to a generous mind that cannot be taken off by all the pleasure of a lazy unmanly life or by the nauseous enjoyment of a dull plenty that produceth no food for the mind which will be considered in the first place by a man that hath a soul when he shall think that if his religion after his wading through a sea of blood come at last to prevail it would infinitely lessen if not entirely destroy the glory riches strength and liberty of his own country and what a sacrifice is this to make to rome where they are wise enough to wonder there should be such fools in the world as to venture struggle and contend nay even die martyrs for that which should it succeed would prove a judgment instead of a blessing to them he will conclude that the advantages of throwing some of their children back again to god almighty when they have too many of them are not equal to the inconveniences they may either feel or fear by continuing their separation from the religion established temporal things will have their weight in the world and though zeal may prevail for a time and get the better in a skirmish yet the war endeth generally on the side of flesh and blood and will do so till mankind is another thing than it is at present and therefore a wise papist in cold blood considering these and many other circumstances which twill be worth his pains to see if he can unmuffle himself from the mask of infallibility will think it reasonable to set his imprisoned senses at liberty and that he hath a right to see with his own eyes hear with his own ears and judge by his own reason the consequences of which might probably be that weighing things in a right scale and seeing them in their true colors he would distinguish between the merit of suffering for a good cause and the foolish ostentation of drawing inconveniences upon himself and therefore will not be unwilling to be convinced that our protestant creed may make him happy in the other world and the easier in this a few of such wise proselytes would by their example draw so many after them that the party would insensibly melt away and in a little time without any angry word we should come to a union that all good men would have reason to rejoice at but we are not to presume upon these conversions without preparing men for them by kind and reconciling arguments nothing is so against our nature as to believe those can be in the right who are too hard upon us there is a deformity in everything that doth us hurt and it will look scurvily in our eye while the smart continueth and a man must have an extraordinary measure of grace to think well of a religion that reduceth him and his family to misery in this respect our trimmer would consent to the mitigation of such laws as were made as it is said king henry the eighth got queen elizabeth in a heat against rome it may be said that even states as well as private men are subject to passion a just indignation of a villainous attempt produceth at the same time such remedies as perhaps are not without some mixture of revenge and therefore though time cannot repeal a law it may by a natural effect soften the execution of it 
there is less danger to rouse a lion when at rest than to awake laws that were intended to have their times of sleeping nay more than that in some cases their natural periods of life dying of themselves without the solemnity of being revoked any otherwise than by the common consent of mankind who do cease to execute when the reasons in great measure fail that first created and justified the rigor of such unusual penalties our trimmer is not eager to pick out some places in history against this or any other party quite contrary it is very solicitous to find out anything that may be healing and tend to an agreement but to prescribe the means of this gentleness so as to make it effectual must come from the only place that can furnish remedies for this cure viz a parliament in the meantime it is to be wished there may be such a mutual calmness of mind as that the protestants might not be so jealous as still to smell the match that was to blow up the king and both houses in the gunpowder treason or to start at every appearance of popery as if it were just taking possession on the other side let not the papists suffer themselves to be led by any hopes though never so flattering to a confidence or ostentation which must provoke men to be less kind to them let them use modesty on their sides and the protestants indulgence on theirs and by this means there would be an overlooking of all venial faults a tacit connivance at all things that do not carry scandal with them and would amount to a kind of natural dispensation with the severe laws since there would be no more accusers to be found when the occasions of anger and animosity are once removed let the papists in the meantime remember that there is a respect due from all the lesser numbers to greater a deference to be paid by an opinion that is exploded to one that is established such a thought well digested will have an influence upon their behavior and produce such a temper as must win the most eager adversaries out of their ill humor to them and give them a title to all the favor that may be consistent with the public peace and security end of the trimmer's opinion concerning the papists read by john greenman